On the Ground, presented by The Cube. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We are on the ground at the Mission Bay Conference Center in downtown San Francisco at the blockchain conference. Blockchain is really busting out beyond Bitcoin, which is kind of the traditional underpinnings of Bitcoin, but it's getting a lot more traction well beyond the Bitcoin ecosystem. And so we were really excited to come up here and see what's going on at the conference. And we're joined uh, at our next segment by the head of the conference, Pete Harris, conference chair, the blockchain conference, and also Lighthouse Partners. Welcome and thanks for inviting us. Thanks, 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 thanks for inviting me. Absolutely, so how many people are here? Give people kind of the rundown on, on yeah. the conference. Um, probably about 250 people here. Okay. Uh, pretty much a mix of people from uh, uh, some very big IT vendors. IBM's an obvious one, but some other vendors. Cisco Systems are here, Intel is here, uh, SAP's represented. Um, so some of those guys. Smaller, uh, you know, startup companies in the blockchain space, they're here too. And also some very big, what I call enterprise IT users. Uh, a pretty good contingent from financial services, which is a little bit surprising to me because I'd have expected uh, to get a good number if it, this, this, this was in New York City, but here in San Francisco, still got a lot of people here and they've come in from a long way away in some cases, not just Wall Street, but we've got uh, the CIO of UBS here from Australia. So um, I think 13 or 14 countries here. So it's kind of interesting on the financial services side because Bitcoin was a way to get away from the trusted third party intermediary, yeah. but the financial companies are here. Right. Is it because of the stick? Is it because of the carrot? Why, why are they, uh, why they think they're getting involved? I, I, I think it's very much the carrot and it's really the, the, the blockchain, you know, blockchain technology as, as, a, as a concept really, really has a, the promise to reduce costs, reduce friction, um, of the whole financial sort of markets, you know, post-trade process. I think that's one big reason. Um, it really, it, it fundamentally, it reduces cost in a number of ways. It reduces risk, which in itself reduces cost. Regulators like it because regulators don't like risk. Um, it is actually very transparent. Uh, so again, regulators like it. Um, Financial services firms are always complaining about the amount of money they're having to spend on complying with regulation. And so if they can, you know, can implement a technology which the regulators like and which costs them a lot less, it's a real win-win for them. And if they can then use it to actually make more money on, on you know, if you like, the top line, that's, that's a triple win. So that's an interesting point because a lot of people perceived at least Bitcoin as an application within blockchain as a way to get around right. regulation, to get around you know trackability, yeah. right? It's anonymous. Right. So how does it play with you know the SEC and banking regulations and all this stuff that comes with established financial services right. companies? Not to mention when you get into other uh, industrials that have again right. compliance, and those types of things. How does blockchain fit? Well, uh, if, if it was simply a, you know, a Bitcoin world, I think yeah, there, there definitely are issues there. <clears throat> but what's very much happened in, in the blockchain world is that um, because a lot of the, the major banks have become interested in it for those reasons, uh, that those, those entities understand regulation and understand the needs of regulation. So they're coming at it from the very first stage of saying, we like this idea of blockchain, but by the way, what, you know, how it works right now, not going to really work. If, if we can improve upon it in certain ways about security, transparency, um, uh, compliance, yeah, we, we can buy into that. And, and what's happening now is that the, the blockchain sort of vendor community, partnering with the large IT vendors who are going to be very important in this, are really sort of coming up and saying, yeah, we, we can implement blockchain technology in a very uh, acceptable form for big business. Right, Not right. happening yet, but it's on the way. Right, and that's where you get somebody like IBM. I asked you before we came on air, what are the big surprises? Yeah. The fact that IBM is here with yeah. a significant presence and a significant investment. Right. So what does that really say to the evolution of blockchain as it, as it grows as a, and matures as a technology? It, it absolutely legitimizes it. Um, the fact that you know, IBM's been 
working on on blockchain technology for I think a couple of years now I think as uh, we heard earlier from from John Wolpert from IBM and he was saying they've, they've got an army of people now working on it uh, and they are they're spread all around the world um, they've got a lot of expertise they they've donated donated a lot of their 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 code and their intellectual property to the open source world which is going to just bolster its adoption so, so I think having a, a company like IBM really helps to push this technology along, which is why you are now seeing a lot of other big IT companies sort of very much get involved. Quite a few of them are here, <coughs> um, you know, partly because they want to know more about what IBM is doing, and they, they want to figure out how they should be getting involved. Right, and I was struck by one of the early keynotes they were talking about. Um, people that are in bankless societies. At the same time, it was a huge yeah. number of people. Mm. At the same time, we read every day that there's more mobile phones now being used than yeah. there are people. You know, how much is the mobile phone and, and mobile phone connectivity and really delivering technology to the hands yeah. of people that were here before enabled it, there was no city, there was no bank, um, really driven you know, some of the adoption of this technology? I think it's definitely played a part. Um, you know, I think, I think mobile, uh, as a general concept has really changed an awful lot, lot, lot of you know, business. Um, and I think certainly now uh, banks see mobile technology, which really can be obviously you know, be you know, created by non-banks offering services over mobile technology. That they really see it as, as um, really a potential disruptor to their business. So the banks want to you know, understand about mobile technology and it definitely has a play in the blockchain and Bitcoin world because it's, a, it's really an on-ramp to the blockchain. Right, or, because one, you can, one of the on -ramps. Yeah, and you can deliver yeah. such powerful technology yeah. to a person in a location yeah. without having to build all the infrastructure to get it there. Certainly, you can, you can, you can build, it, build a bank without a, without a single you know, uh, brick, brick mortar um, branch and you can build it and you can deploy that if you want, in the middle of Africa. Right. The other thing that came up in one of the keynotes is really the concept of friction, and friction yeah. in financial transactions. Mm -hmm. And removing friction is a you know, business 101 way to unlock right. value, whether right. that's in your supply chain, your financial transactions, a lot of places yeah. if you remove friction, that's usually money. Do you think that is you know, one of the big draws again for the financial services companies getting yeah. involved here? It's just a way to unlock value in so, a friction system? Uh, to, to financial services firms, friction absolutely means money, and it's money that to them they're spending in you know, for no good reason. Uh, um, as I say, it, 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 it's, it's not helpful in lots of other ways. It adds the risk, which, which actually means that you know, banks have to have more money on reserve to cover their risks. So if you can get rid of friction, you can a fundamentally reduce costs but you can sort of in a roundabout way do it as well. So big, big driver, okay. big driver. So give you the last word before we, before we sign out. And again, a lot of interesting conversations happening here in the halls as well mm -hmm. as the keynotes. What should outsiders look for over the next year, before your next conference next year? Three months, six months, mm -hmm. nine months, as indications of adoption. Where, where will blockchain start to get some traction, where will we see uh, as a kind of a leading indicator that this thing is really right. starting to deliver on the promise and the expectation that a lot of people have? Certainly I think I think yeah, the world will be looking to the financial services because they are very much early adopters. Um, I think looking at the, some early you know, proof of concepts working in, in the financial services, seeing how they're going and especially looking at how big IT vendors, you know, IBM's in the space, but yeah, there, are, there, are, there are many other companies besides IBM. Yeah, we should be seeing those, those people get involved as well. And if they are, then it's here to stay. And if they're not, there's a question mark. All right. Well, Pete, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy day running no this show. Absolutely. It's good to see good you. To see you. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground at the Mission Bay Conference Center in San Francisco at the Blockchain Conference. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.